My husband's friend told him that I'm cheating on him and that is the best to open our relationship, that she could help us. First post on January 11, 2023. It all started a few weeks ago when we were having dinner with some friends and one of them in particular began to joke that after 13 years together surely one of us already got bored of the other. And she said that surely the one who got bored first was me because I'm the attractive one in the relationship. And I know that it affected my husband because that night he joked that he was actually lucky that I paid attention to him, but I thought at that moment that he would just forget about it, but he didn't. He started asking me all the time if I love him, if I'm happy with him, if I would change something about our relationship and things like that. And yesterday while we were talking about it I told him that I would not change him for anything or anyone and he started crying, which was really weird because he rarely cries. And I didn't like seeing him like this so I spoke with his sister, with whom he is really close. She told me that for weeks one of our friends has been telling him that he should prepare for the day that I cheat on him or leave him. And she also told him that she thinks I'm already seeing someone else. That if he wants it to be less painful for him, it's best to open the relationship. That if he wants she and her boyfriend can help us open our marriage since it would be easier because we both know them. That this will help us because we will be able to experiment with more people and I will not get bored of him and he will also be able to have fun with her like the lifelong friends they are. According to his sister, he told her that he hates those things but if I want to do it he will let me experiment with more people. And to be honest I hate everything that has to do with open relationships too. If you like it great, but it's not my thing. And I thought that I was always clear with that. That's why I don't even know why that friend said that. She has an open relationship but she was never one of those people who wants everyone to be like them. She used to respect us so I don't know what happened. How can I make him understand that she lied about me because she probably just wants to sleep with him? Update. January 28, 2023. I talked to my husband and he told me everything she told him. Apparently she's been telling him for months that he is not attractive enough to keep me for long, that love is not everything and that looks are important to everyone, and that people who say they don't care about beauty are lying. And that pissed me off so much because for me my husband is really beautiful and I love him more than anyone in this world. If it wasn't like that I wouldn't have been with him for 13 years and she knows that. And the worst part is that my husband believed her because she destroyed his self-esteem with all those things that are not true just because she wanted to sleep with him and one of her partners. I think she said he's in his late 40s or something, with me, or at least that's what she said. She has two boyfriends or whatever and one of them apparently knows me. I don't know how because we never met him, and he told her that he would like to know if he could have a chance with me. That's why she's been messing with my husband's mind all these months. That's what she told us when we confronted her. She also admitted that she likes my husband, not romantically but physically, and that's why she also wanted to convince him to sleep with her because she has liked him for years. Honestly, I don't understand anything about that world of having two or more partners and I'm not interested in knowing anything either. I just know that I find it disgusting. If you want to have a harem, that's up to you, personally I don't want that and I find it disgusting that they don't understand it, like respect the people that don't like that, is that so difficult to understand? She apologized many times but my husband didn't forgive her and I don't intend to forgive her either. She behaved like an idiot and it is impossible for her to win back our trust. On the other hand, my husband and I are fine. Of course we had a lot of talks about what happened these last few weeks and about our relationship but we're fine. And that's all that matters to me, that our little family is well, for us and for our children. Am I the asshole for not knowing a term that someone called me is racist? I am a 34-year-old male, a consultant and was hired by a mid-sized company for a contract that requires a meeting about once a week in office. These are usually lunch meetings. Recently, after we were done eating, I was chatting with one of the team members, Jen, and I yawned. I excused myself and said something like, damn, I shouldn't have loaded up on carbs just now. And Jen laughed and then yawned herself. A few people noticed this and we all had a lame little chuckle over it. Another team member in the room, Alice, says to both of us, damn, it looks like you two have the itis. Jen went wide-eyed, 
but I guess I must have looked puzzled because well, I was. I didn't know what that meant. So Alice goes at me and says, I know you're not pretending you don't know what the itis is. I simply told her I'm not, and I don't. Alice rolls her eyes and starts to say something and Jen cuts her off and says, What is wrong with you? Alice just walked out of the room and Jen apologized to me on Alice's behalf. Another guy, Den, then explained that that term is rooted in racism and alludes to a stereotype of laziness associated with African Americans. Now, I'm even more dumbfounded because I cannot imagine what would possess Alice to say this to us. If she wanted to call us both lazy for yawning after lunch, she could have put it any number of ways. Alice and Jen are both black, and I am white, which I guess does matter to this story. Alice returns and comes at me, calling me racist and saying I shouldn't be here. I didn't say anything. Dan and Jen and another guy, Pete, came to my defense and told Alice that not only did I not do say anything racist, but I barely said anything at all, and that they didn't know what her problem was. She swears she is right and I am racist, and then got close up in my face and yelled at me that it is my responsibility to be familiar with all racist terms so I can speak up if I hear one, and says she was testing me and I failed. She said that I should have known what that meant and stood up for Jan. Alice is petite and I'm a big dude so I felt it would be prudent to create some distance and backed away. She continued about how I am the worst and eventually left the room again. She did not return, and it was all so nuts we decided to break for the day. Days after I got a call from their HR telling me someone reported the incident and that they had some questions. I answered honestly and they said that it matched up with what they'd heard, and that Alice would suffer consequences. They apologized and offered me a paid, out of my contract but I really like working with them and I told them so, and said if you are game to continue then so am I. They were happy, and we hung up. Turns out Alice's consequences were that she was demoted, reassigned and she's saying on social media that a racist man got her kicked off her team at work. It doesn't make sense, but I do feel guilty. Reddit, am I the asshole for any of this? Edit, thank you to all who took the time to read and comment. Some clarifications. We are in the Northeast. I was born and raised here, but I don't know where the rest of them are from. If I had to guess, I would say Jen was raised here too, but I am not sure. I have no idea about Alice or the rest of them. I did not go to HR. I don't even work at their company. I'm just a consultant on a short-ish term contract. I'm there once a week, Max. After the day was over, I went home and didn't say anything to anyone except my own friends and family. I have not seen her social media firsthand as I don't follow Alice or any of my clients' teams. Someone showed me screenshots of her Instagram story rants from the weekend. In Alice's kind of defense, she might not meme me when she says a racist man got her kicked off her team. She could know who went to HR and be talking about that person. I was hesitant to include it in the original post for fear being rejected, booted, but since some commenters knew or have researched, guessed, what Dan specifically pointed out when explaining, the itis, racist roots was that it had stemmed from and word itis, and Jen confirmed. Update. Motivation mystery solved. Maybe, kinda. Thank you again to all who commented and told me I was not, in fact, being a crazy, racist, A. Eh? It's more appreciated than I can articulate right now. I had an off-the-record talk with the big boss last Monday and learned Alice generally behaves as if she's the boss of the entire team I'm working with, she's not, and believe she should would also be in charge of this project. She was apparently stunned and subsequently furious when her boss decided to bring in a consultant to spearhead it. He actually apologized for not apprising me of that before we commenced. In my initial post, I mentioned that one of the things Alice said while yelling at me was that I shouldn't be here, which was sort of out of place, but I didn't think anything of it in the moment. Now, it makes sense. I'm not going to make any assumptions or judgments as to her performance and expertise. I have no idea if she deserves the title to be in charge of the project or not. In the few meetings we had, she basically said nothing, which I took as her just being shy quite whatever, but I guess it was because she hated the idea of me being there. Also, despite my having a policy not to really drink socialize at all with current clients' teams outside of office meetings, I ended up having a drink with both Jen and Dan the other night. I think I just really wanted to get all the way to the bottom of this and put it away for good. They confirmed Alice has generally been very bossy and acts like she's in charge, but nobody understands why as she was the last person hired to the team. The reason Jen cut Alice off when she went to yell at me the first time was because Jen knew Alice was looking to start drama and took Alice saying to me, don't pretend you don't know what the itis is, as Alice implying I am racist myself and that I was feigning ignorance about what it meant. 
Evidently, Alice has tried a similar brand of shit stirring before, and it pisses Jen off as Jen has worked in what she says were horrifically racist, sexist environments in the past, and this job isn't one, so she feels really sensitive to the idea of starting drama where there isn't any. The impression I get is that aside from general work annoyances, everyone really is happy there. But then again, I'm only there once a week, so WTF do I know? I have no new info on Alice. Anyway, so that's the whole story, and I guess this is all over now. Can't thank everyone enough for your thoughts and opinions. Edit. Thanks to the commenter who linked this article about the word. I don't know if every example in the article is accurate, but it helps give an understanding of this particular word. My parents don't like me having a relationship with my ex's kids. My ex and I were married for four years and we got divorced two years ago. She had two children from a previous relationship, a girl and a boy aged nine and eight when we got married. I loved them like my own and got pretty close to them in my marriage. I was the first stable father figure they had. My parents never liked my ex. They didn't like that she was older and had kids. They told me that I was young and should want to start my own family. I ignored them and married her. We got divorced because we fell out of love. Our divorce was amicable and I still talk to my ex sometimes. But I've maintained a good relationship with her children and I love them. They're 15 and 14 now and stay with me some weekends. I go their school for their sporting events. They like me very much and my ex never objected to any of it. My parents have been grumbling about how I wasn't their father ever since I got divorced. They keep telling me that they're not my responsibility. I've started seeing someone recently and my parents told me that I should stop seeing the kids. Even a couple of my friends told me that I shouldn't be the father of my ex's children. I didn't know that having a relationship with your ex's children is looked down upon. How should I deal with this? Update. After I made the previous post, I spoke with my ex about the issue. She said that she was happy that I kept in touch with her children. She also said that her children were always eager to spend time with me and that my presence rectified her regret of not having a father to her kids. We decided I would be her children's godparent. When I told my parents about it, they were furious. I told them clearly that it was my decision and that they had no part in it. I also told them that I would stop talking to them if they kept pushing it. My girlfriend supported my decision as well. I want to thank the person who gave me the godparent idea and all the people who replied to the previous post. Thank you.